What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released macOS Big Sur 11.2.2 to the public a couple weeks after the release of 11.2.1 and this is the only software that Apple released this week but the new beta releases should continue next week for iOS, iPadOS, watchOS, tvOS and also macOS. We should see a Big Sur 11.3 beta update next week as well. But in this video, we're talking about 11.2.2 here, the latest public release. We're going to talk about what's new in this update, the bugs, bug fixes and all of that good stuff. So you can see here the size of this update on my M1 Mac mini came in at 2.43 gigabytes. So a relatively you know familiar size, it's usually around that size and you should expect to see it around two to three gigabytes on your MacBooks as well. And if we take a look at the build number for this update, you can see here 11.2.2 and the build number there is 20D80. So now what's new in Mac OS Big Sur version 11.2.2? And you can see here on the release notes from Apple, they mentioned one major fix that has been addressed in this update. And you can see it has to do with 2019 or later MacBook Pros and 2020 or later MacBook Airs. So there was a major issue where it says these models would incur damage when they are connected to certain third party non-compliant powered USB-C hubs and docks. And this was actually an issue that I've seen on forums and even in my comments over the past couple of months, mainly related to the M1, MacBook Pro and MacBook Air, but some people also had this issue with the Intel version of the MacBook Pro. So if you go over here to Reddit, you can see this was a pretty popular thread over on the R MacBook subreddit. This is posted two months ago, back in December, and you can see the title is Dead M1 Mac with USB-C multi-port adapters. And you can see multiple people are having this issue. If you look down here at the votes, multiple people have this issue in this poll. And you can see it says, it seems there is potentially an issue with M1 Max and USB-C hubs, specifically related to power delivery capable ones. And he gives an example of the type that he's talking about, which this from Satechi or Sateki is very popular. I know I've seen this one multiple times, brought up in my videos and it's very popular on Amazon as well, but it seems some people were having major issues, pretty much a brick of their Mac when using a USB-C hub like that. And you can see here it says, when experienced, the Mac will simply go completely blank and then be totally unresponsive. No lights, LEDs, fans, nothing at all. It's as if it has no power. So some pretty major issues going on there with these later version Macs, not even just the M1 Macs, the 2019 and later for the MacBook Pro and then the 2020 and later for the MacBook Air. But you can see even in the poll right here, multiple people are having you know a failure here with these devices. So 26, 31, 10, and seven all have issues, you know, failed with or without power delivery. And then you can see the majority of people don't have issues, but a good amount of people do have issues just in this subreddit right here. So you can even see some of the comments saying a MacBook Air 2020 died on me day two while using an HP travel hub. So some pretty major issues here with these USB-C hubs with the MacBook. So Apple has addressed that here in macOS Big Sur 11.2.2. And that's gonna be pretty much the only difference I've noticed so far here in macOS Big Sur 11.2.2. Really nothing else, no security updates, nothing like that. But there are some other things I did want to talk about with this video. And the first thing is actually to do with another major bug with M1 Max. So it seems like there's a bug in macOS Big Sur that is causing some concern for the SSDs inside. So apparently there's a bug on macOS Big Sur current version as well, probably 11.2.2 as well, because Apple did not address it in the release notes. But basically this bug causes the SSD drive to write data at a very unhealthy speed. And this could potentially lead to a shorter lifespan of these M1 Macs. And you can see here, this is the article from iMore. And you can see the quote right here, if this is accurate, some of these machines aren't going to last half a year which is obviously a major, major concern and something I think that Apple is definitely going to fix very, very soon. So you can see there are just some excerpts from forums right here. And it says some more professional users of the new M1 MacBooks are experiencing extremely high drive writes over a relatively short time. The most severe cases have consumed about 10 to 13% of the maximum warrantable TBW value of the SSDs, given their capacity and using values for equivalent market available in VME drives. So you can see some screenshots there and everything talking about this. So a pretty major issue here. And you can see multiple people here on Twitter and forums 
mentioning this. And you can see here, Dan also said, any Mac experts know why my SSD just fills up throughout the day, frequently going from 65-ish percent free to 100% over the course of eight hours. Reboot dumps whenever cache is loading up, but it's super annoying. And that was on 11.2.1. So lots of issues, it seems like, with the SSD drives in these M1 Macs and MacBooks. So hopefully Apple does address that very soon. This just started getting pressed a couple of days ago. So hopefully Apple does catch on and we see a fix for this in version 11.3. And then another bug I wanted to talk about has to do with the M1 Mac Mini, which is the device I'm using right now. And it's hooked up to my LG Ultrafine 5K. Now, I do not have any issues with my M1 Mac Mini or my display, but it seems that Apple is investigating issues with pink squares appearing on displays connected to the M1 Mac Mini, as you can see here reported by Mac Rumors. And it says, in an internal memo this week obtained by Mac Rumors, Apple informed service providers that it is aware of and investigating an issue that may result in pink squares or pixels appearing on displays connected to an M1 Mac Mini. So it appears that people have been reporting this for a while on the Apple support, you know, forums there and Mac rumors forums and Reddit as well. I personally have not seen this. I may have missed it or nobody commented on my videos about this, but it seems like people are having issues with the M1 Mac mini when they connect it to their display. So I guess it's a bug inside of the Mac mini or maybe a big Sur bug. But hopefully we do get a fix for that pretty soon as well. And you can see here, Mac Rumor says that the memo was issued on February 19th and that we could possibly see a fix in time for Mac OS Big Sur 11.3, which would be nice. So yeah, this bug or the SSD bug have not been addressed yet, but hopefully we will see a fix for that very soon. Now, I did also wanna talk about Big Sur 11.2.1 just because I did not cover that here on the channel. I did just wanna mention it just in case you guys are facing this issue, but this did actually fix an issue that prevented the battery from charging in some 2016 and 2017 MacBook Pro models. But that wasn't the only thing that changed there. We also got some important security updates in version 11.2.1. And you can see here, this is the document that Apple posted. There were multiple CVEs, three to be exact, that were addressed in 11.2.1. And you can see there was an Intel graphics driver bug, an Intel graphics driver bug again right here, and then a pseudo bug right here. And you can see here the impact was a local attacker may be able to elevate their privileges. And the description here shows that the issue was addressed by updating to pseudo version 1.9.5p2. So that was a pretty major bug. That was the major security vulnerability that was available on Mac OS Big Sur 11.2 and earlier. So that was a good reason to update to 11.2.1. But if you did not, I would of course recommend updating now to 11.2.2 because you get more fixes along with the security updates. Now, Apple did not post anything for 11.2.2, as you can see right here, no published CVE entry. So nothing notable there doesn't mean nothing has been fixed. It just shows nothing has been published. But the main ones, of course, came with 11.2.1. Now, as far as the performance goes, I've not really noticed any difference at all in the performance. I did have to reboot my M1 Mac Mini after updating to 11.2.1 because for some reason, QuickTime Player did not work. Anytime I tried to record audio or do anything with QuickTime, it would just not save it. And I had major issues. And then when I went to reboot my device, it took a while to reboot. So that was a pretty interesting bug I had after updating to 11.2.2. But aside from that, I've really had no bugs at all here on version 11.2.1 or 11.2.2 so far. And I would expect the performance to be the same as it was on 11.2 and 11.2.1. Now, as far as the battery life, I have been using 11.2.1 on my M1 MacBook Pro, and I've really not noticed any difference in the battery life either coming from 11.2, and I would not expect any kind of change with the battery life in 11.2.2 on the M1 MacBook Pro or MacBook Air. So now when can we expect to see macOS Big Sur 11.3? And we're gonna see this sometime in March when iOS 14.5 gets released along with watchOS 7.4 and all the other updates as well. And that's most likely going to be in mid to late March. So we could see that on the week of the 15th or maybe the week of the 22nd. It's really hard to say at this point. It really depends on when the iOS updates, you know, start looking like it's about to come out. Then again, Apple has not really been releasing macOS at the same time as iOS. So it's really tough to say, 
but I would not expect to see Mac OS Big Sur 11.3 until mid to late March. That of course is unless Apple finds a major security vulnerability or a major bug and they need to push out 11.3 ASAP. That's the only reason I could see them releasing it before, you know, mid to late March. So what we'll to wait and see. Of course, I will keep you guys updated over on my Twitter and also here on YouTube as well. I know a lot of you guys wanted to see more Mac OS update videos, and that's what I'm trying to bring to you guys here today and hopefully in the future as well. So if you want to keep seeing these Mac OS update videos, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up and letting me know down in a comment below. But also, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you guys stay tuned for my Mac OS Big Sur 11.3 video, which should be out within the next month. And also stay tuned because next week we will see some new iOS and iPad OS beta updates. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.